Tonight, a nationwide search for two missing children has come to a gruesome end. Family members confirm that the remains found on Chad Daybell's rural property in Idaho are the bodies of his stepchildren. A neatly tied, layered plastic bag buried in a pet cemetery. A bucket atop human remains. Two cult leaders preparing for the Armageddon and a string of suspicious deaths leading up to their arrests. This is the final chapter of Lori Daybell's story. Murderer, mother, and brainwashed cult leader. Chad, where are Lori's kids? Listen, just tell people what's happening. There's people around the country praying for your children, praying for you guys. Why don't you give us answers? That's great. That's great. Being a good mom is very important to me, and a good wife, and a good worker, and being all those things together is not easy. So I'm basically a teaching time bomb. <laughs> she lost her mind. I don't know how to say it. We're LDS. She thinks she's a resurrected being and a and a a god and remember the 144,000 so Jesus is coming next year. So what makes her a danger to herself and she to others? She threatened me, murder me, kill me. She threatened to murder you? Yes. And she said, how did she do that? She said, I can murder you. I can murder you. I will kill you because you're not Charles and nobody will care. Lori, from what I understand, said that she has been on 21 planets and Chad has been on 31. Um, I wouldn't say planets, but I would just say lives lives. Mm -hmm. So she's had 21 lives mm -hmm. and he's had 31. He was a holy ghost and has had five lives on this earth and she's had four lives. Correct. She had said that he had turned into a zombie the day before I got there. It doesn't add up. If they're in a safe place, why is she in Hawaii having a great time on her honeymoon when her children are hiding in safety? That, that doesn't even make sense. I think most people understand that. The woman you just saw being interviewed is Melanie Gibb, former friend of convicted murderers and cult leaders Lori and Chad Daybell. After the deaths of Lori's two children, Tylee and JJ, Melanie came out in an exclusive video detailing the inner workings of Daybell's Latter-day Saints-inspired cult. The recently discovered chain of events, which led up to Lori's brainwashing, and her children's tragic ends is beyond what anyone could imagine. When did this all begin? Did Lori and Chad kill each other's spouses in the name of a false god? And what was the motive behind the killings of JJ and Tylee? To understand the many years of tumult which led up to Lori and Chad's arrests, we need to start at the very beginning. Chad Daybell became notorious following the publication of multiple books, which he authored on the subject of end times and religion, which explained his dogma of multiple lives, as well as his special place as a holy ghost meant to lead 144,000 chosen people to God during Christ's second coming. He started publishing in 2004, when he also founded Spring Creek Book Company in order to self-publish. I've recently released my autobiography entitled Living on the Edge of Heaven, where I tell more about my two near-death experiences and how that prompted me to write my novels. In 2015, Chad reported hearing a voice telling him to relocate to Rexburg, Idaho, where he moved with his former wife, Tammy. In the fall of 2018, he would meet Lori Vallow, who by then had become an avid reader of his. In 2018, Lori attended a Preparing the People meet along with Gibb. It is there she would meet her future husband and religious mentor, Chad Daybell. If you've had this Holy Ghost experience testify to you, you're on the right path. It was then that Chad set his eyes on Lori, expanding upon the mysteries of God for a whole night. Chad explained that he had lived 31 lives and that he could see whether people were light or dark. He referred to Lori as an eternal being who had lived 21 lives. From that night on, Lori felt she had a higher purpose. Originally Lori Cox, the future cult leader had gone through four divorces at the time she and Chad met. She was extremely close to her brother Alex Cox, who would also go on to be involved in the crimes and Daybell's cult. Throughout her life, Alex acted as Lori's protector, and he would protect her no matter the cost. 
His first attack on Lori's partners was on her third ex-husband in 2007, Joseph Anthony Ryan, whom Lori had her daughter Tylee with. Claiming that Ryan had been abusive towards Lori, Cox tasered him and threatened to murder him. What no one knew at the time is that Alex was capable of much more, much darker things. In 2006, Lori married Charles Vallow. A longtime Catholic ended up converting to Lori's Faith of the Latter-day Saints, or LDS. The couple adopted Vallow's grandnephew, J.J. Vallow, and in late 2014, they moved to Kauai, Hawaii. At least for a time, things in Lori, Tylee, and J.J.'s lives were stable, but this peace would not last for long. In February 2019, Lori had met Chad, and the pair would communicate daily, convinced that they had been married in seven previous lifetimes. At the time, both Lori and Chad were married to different people. Around this same time, Lori would go on to tell Charles Vallow that she no longer cared about him or JJ, and claimed that she was the reincarnated wife of LDS founder Joseph Smith. She then vanished for almost two whole months, and Vallow filed for divorce, claiming that he was fearing for his life. She took all the money out of her bank account today. My truck had gone from the airport. She went to the airport and got it. So what makes her a danger to herself and she to others? She threatened me, murder me, kill me. She threatened to murder you? Yes. And, and she's talking in a spirit. I will kill you. Spiritual. No, she talks in physically. I will kill you because you're not Charles, and nobody will care. So she, she at this point doesn't think you are her husband? She thinks I'm Nick Schneider. Who's Nick Schneider? I have no idea. Okay. It's the name she used. I don't know where it came from. What followed Vallow's claims is a sequence of lies, murders, and religious fanaticism, the likes of which no one could have seen coming. Curious? At The Decoder, we compile reliable sources and evidence to bring you the truth about high-profile true crime cases. If this video is answering your questions about this unbelievable case, make sure you check out our other work. Your support is what keeps us going at The Decoder. The 31st of January 2019 was the beginning of the end for Charles Vallow. Police body cam footage shows him pleading with Lori to ask for mental health help at a time when Lori's obsession with Daybell's cult was beginning to concern her husband. So what's going on tonight? I can't get in touch with my, my kids. How old are your kids? Six and a half and 16, okay? Um, How long have you been trying? Two days. So what makes her a danger to herself and she to others? She threatened me, murder me, kill me, yes. And she said How did she do that? My, my bishop right there is in the car. He was on the phone with me today when she said, I will have you destroyed, is what she said there. Okay, that's not that's not a threat to kill you. Yesterday was a threat to kill me. Today okay. before what did, what did she say yesterday? She said, you're not Charles. I don't know who you are, what you did with Charles, but I can murder you now with my powers. Law enforcement, however, considers to be of sound mental health, and the incident was dismissed. In February 2019, Vallow filed for divorce claiming that his wife would kill him if he got in the way of her mission. In the early summer of 2019, Vallow went to the police once again over Lori's threats. He said, psychologically, she's gone. Something has happened to her. But Vallow was not listened to, and on the 11th of July, 2019, he was shot and killed by Lori's brother Alex in his Arizona home. Fire department, what is the address of the emergency? 5531 South Four Peaks. And is that a house in Chandler? Yes. And what is the emergency? Uh, I, I shot my brother-in-law. Okay, what part of his body is injured? In the chest. Okay, is he awake and responsive or unconscious? Unconscious. Okay, is he breathing? I can't tell. Okay, are you wanting? Are you willing to go over to him and check? Sure. Okay, do you just let me know if you see his chest going up and down? How old is he? It's not moving. He's 60. Okay, and are you wanting to start CPR? No, I don't know how to do that. I can walk you through it. Okay. Where's the okay. gun now? 
it's in the other room. And just keep going with those compressions. Petey, did you have any other questions? Yes. What's your name, sir? My name is Alex. Last name is Cox, C-O-X. Who else is there in the house with you? Uh, just me. What's his name, your brother-in-law? Charles Vallow. His last name, I'm sorry? V-A-L-L-O, Vallow. Police and medics are on the way to help you. Um, Thank you. How long ago did this occur? Did it just happen? Yeah, maybe five minutes before I called. At that point, however, it had been confirmed that Vallo had been dead for at least 40 minutes. Who else is in the house? No one else is in the house. Okay, just have a seat right there. Yeah. Let's get FD in here. Yeah. Have a seat. Yeah. Seat secure. We got the gentleman out. Uh, have you have some ID on you, sir? Yeah. What happened today? How did it get to this? I don't know. He was enraged. Well, what's going on? What happened? Oh. He was talking with my sister earlier. No, what happened today, though? Like, just in the oh, last 20 minutes. He came to, he came at me with a bat. Okay. He, was he, he living here or no. visiting? He came to pick up his son. Okay, is the son inside? No. My sister took him to school. Okay, so it was just you at the house? Yes. And he came, how long, what time did he come to pick up pick up the son? Uh, I don't know, 20 minutes ago, maybe. Okay, so you know who he is, let him in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey. No, I think they were talking earlier, and then she left, and then... He got into it with me. Like what? What do you mean? I, I don't know. He was, he was accusing me. Of, he was just yelling at me. Okay. So, what was he yelling at you about? Uh, I told my sister because I'd broken up a tussle with him earlier. And he told me not to interfere anymore with them or I'd pay. And he came at me with a bat. Okay, so he showed up in the house with a bat in his hand? No. Okay, so. There was a scuffle earlier. With my sister and my niece. My niece got involved. About earlier, meaning earlier this week, earlier no, 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 this morning. Just this morning, before they left. Before your your wife left. My sister. Before your sister left. Yeah. Okay. Who lives here with you? Nobody. I don't live here. My sister lives here, and my niece lives here. And you're yeah. just visiting? I was visiting for the night. Okay. So you're over here visiting your sister and yes. your niece. Yes. Okay. And there was a tussle between your sister and her husband. Yes. And does the husband live here or no? No. Okay. Okay, is he an ex-husband or just current husband? Uh, it's, they're working on that. Gotcha. So at some point earlier today, they get into a some type of domestic? Yeah, just this morning, then they left, and then he came at me. They left meaning who? Both my, of the parties? My, or? Yeah, my sister took my niece and my nephew. So they left? To create some space for him, and then he came at me. Okay, but did he leave also? No. He stayed here? He stayed. So you guys are kind of talking in between or what? And kind of go through it. So, say something like, hey, don't touch my sister, or... Yeah, so what, what, just, yeah. Okay. And then he picked up the bat. Where was the bat at? Is this vehicle here? How did he get here? Uh, is this here from Texas? No, that's my sister's car. I think he came in a rental car. I think his sister's in the You think his sister's in the rental car? Okay. So you both, so you get in an argument? What is it over? Well, it's over my sister. He was, he was uh, getting physical with her, and so my niece came out with her bat. And then he took the bat away from her. Wait a minute, I thought you said your niece left. She did. This was before. Okay, so before before your uh, your sister and your niece left, yeah. at some point uh, your sister and her husband are arguing. Yes. Verbal argument. And then your niece pulls out a bat? Well, it wasn't verbal. He was getting close and she came out to defend my sister with her bat. Your niece? Yes. Okay. And then she poked at him and then he took it away. Okay. And I, I stepped in and told them they needed to separate. Right. So then my sister leaves with my niece. And how long ago did they leave? It's been like an hour, 10 minutes? 20 minutes, maybe. I don't know. Okay. So it's not, not no, terribly no, long. No, no, no. Oh, okay. And then, uh, and then he's, he's coming back at me, and he's still got the bat in his hand. I'm like, what are you doing? And where are you at? Where We're are you in both the living at? room. Okay. And then... I turned around and he hit me in the back of the head with the bat. So I went to my room and got my gun. I so carry it. you went to your room, meaning yeah, the room you're room staying, staying in? in? Yeah. Okay, and you brought your uh, brought a gun yes. with you? Yes. Do you always yes. bring a gun? I have a concealed carry always. Okay. Just to be safe. Hi, who are, are you? Okay, just stand over there for just a second, guys. And then 
uh, I told him to put the bat down and he wouldn't and he came at me and again. And the wife just showed up as well. So you told him to put the... Yes. So where are you at? Where, where are you at now? Did you stay in your bedroom? No. Okay, why did you stay just in your bedroom and close the door? Is that something you didn't think about? or? It didn't even occur to me. Okay, so walk me through it. So you go back in your room. So I, just, I just went back in the living room. I'm like, what is your problem? With the gun in your Yes. Room. And I said, I want you to put that bat down. And he wouldn't do it. And he's like, you, and he came at me with the bat again after he'd already hit me in the head. So I shot him to stop him. So yeah, if you can just kind of tell me kind of what happened. It sounds like some of this may have started last night or something along those lines. Right. So start where you think it makes the most sense. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I told you, it's yeah. a crazy question. <laughs> well, he's always mad at me, right? Okay. And he doesn't want a divorce, but I don't like him and don't want to deal with him. So that's just how it is. Yeah. <laughs> so we married for 14 years. We dealt with it for 14 years of him being horrible to her. Me and him have always kind of not gotten along, mm -hmm. like just since I was little. And so there have been a few times that we've gotten in fights and stuff like that. And so I don't yeah, so I'm just kind of always scared of that. Yeah. He came over in the morning and he's like banging on the door. I'm like, oh great, here we go, you know. And I was just going to be nice. I was just going to be nice as possible. And I had JJ stuff already for school. And so. Do you remember about what time we got there? Um, he said he'd be there at 7.30, but it was more like 7.40-ish okay. or 7.35. I don't know. Okay. But I remember thinking, looking at the clock, and he was at that 7.30. And he's usually Mr. Yeah. On show. Yes. So I was like, okay. Um, he's just being real smirky and real like jerky, you know, to me. And I was like, ignoring him, whatever. And so he was like, I'm like, your brother lives there with you? No. Okay. He had stayed with me last night because I was worried he was going to come over and okay. cause trouble with me. Okay. And just wanted someone else there, like my <laughs> brother there, because I trust my brother and. So this morning he comes back in and... He comes back in, I went and give him his phone. He was screaming at me to give him his phone. He was very worried about whatever was on his text mm -hmm. that he did not want me to see. And so I was just holding it there and he was screaming at me. And I was kind of walking towards around the house with it so he couldn't get it. He's like reaching for it and stuff like that. And so Tylee came out of her room upset mm -hmm. and she had a bat... And she told him to leave her mother alone, like, uh -huh. right? So she was really, whatever. And he's screaming at her, don't you hit me with that bat, blah, 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 blah. Like, is uh, there a reason you put the bat up? Yeah, he was walking towards my mom, and I just didn't want him to do anything, so I kind of just stuck out the bat. Like, my mom was right beside me, and he was right there, so it wasn't, like, between them. Okay. It was kind of just, like, I just stuck it out to be, like, keep your distance, kind mm -hmm. of. When you say you didn't want him to do anything, what did you think he was going to do? Hit her. Okay. Yeah, it's, for the most part, been pretty, like, mundane, but there have been a few, like, violent times with him when I was really scared that he was going to hit me or hit my mom, like, okay. just because everything was kind of crazy. So Tylee goes outside. Yeah, she was outside. And, and then what happened? Then he, they got up from that, and my brother had, like, stepped back, I guess, and um, then Charles was coming with me at the back, yelling at me to give him his phone mm -hmm. still, because I had it in my hand. It was all really quickly, mm -hmm. and then... Um, and we were all right there in that room, except for the kids had been outside by that time, and I heard the gunshot mm -hmm. in. So you heard the shot? Mm hmm Did Did you actually see see the shot, or did you just hear it? I had gone around mm -hmm. to the kitchen to get away from him, and so back around. So I don't know if you went in the house. I didn't, so I'm like so, a little bit of a disadvantage. Yeah, so I didn't see when... I didn't see the shot. I heard it, and then I came back around, and I saw that he was on the ground. Okay. And was freaking out yeah. and so I was just freaking out and I just went into mom mode I'm like I've got to go to get JJ to school I've got to get to the kids I just felt like I gotta get to the kids mm -hmm. and so I just went outside and to see if they were in there okay I didn't want them coming back in the house when all that was going on and, and I don't and you may not know this mm -hmm. so because I know you heard the shot 
Do you know at what point your brother had the gun? Do you know if he had it when they got in their first fight, or did he have to go get it, or do you do you know that at all? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Does your brother normally carry a gun? Like, I carry a gun everywhere I go. Right. Like, so, I know he's a gun person. Like, okay. he has guns and things. Okay. He's did you, with guns. And... Did you know that he had one with him? No. When he came over? No, okay. but I wouldn't be surprised if he did, because okay. he's very, very professional with guns. Proficient? Professional? Mm -hmm. Um, I, responsible is usually a good right, but I'm responsible with um, As all the other witnesses had similar stories, police did not investigate murder further. But Lori acted strangely regarding the situation, telling JJ school a completely different story. A school employee said, Lori just told us that Charles committed suicide last week. I can only say it didn't feel right. Charles Vallow was a great father. He would do anything for his son. The staff at JJ's school says JJ wasn't told about his father's death until August 2019, what would be his last day in the classroom. He came in very angry. The whole day he kept saying, my dad's not dead. My dad's not in heaven. My dad's just traveling. He's not in heaven. Lori would later be indicted for conspiracy to murder Vallow. In early September 2019, Lori, Tylee, JJ, and Alex Cox relocated to Rexburg, Idaho. On September 8, 2019, Tylee and JJ were seen alive together for one last time. They were in Yellowstone Park along with Lori and Alex Cox. At around 6.45 p.m. that same night, Phone records show the party of four driving back to Lori's home in Rexburg. At 2.45 a.m. that same night, Alex Cox was tracked to Daybell's home. Cox left the following day at 11.53 a.m. In some suspicious text messages from Chad to his wife Tammy, he said, Well, I've had an interesting morning. I felt I should burn all of the limb debris by the fire pit before it got too soaked by the coming storms. While I did so, I spotted a big raccoon along the fence. I hurried and got my gun, and he was still walking along. I got close enough that one shot did the trick. He is now in our pet cemetery. Fun times! On the 8th of September, Daybell and Tammy had also signed an application raising her life insurance policy to the maximum amount. On the following day, September 9th, phone records once again placed Cox on Daybell's property in the same general area where human remains would later be found. On the 22nd of September, 2019, Melanie Gibb was among the last people to see JJ alive. Reportedly, Lori described him as being a zombie who climbed up on the cabinets, climbed up on top of the fridge, smashed her picture of Christ down, and then climbed up onto the upper cabinets and got in between the top of the cabinet and the ceiling. Did she speak at all about JJ? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he was all around us and we were talking about him quite a bit, actually. What did she say? As I arrived on the Thursday, she had said that he had turned into a zombie the day before I got there. And she was pointing out behaviors of his, like, look how he's doing this, that's unusual, or look how he's doing that. And she was trying to create um, uncertainty in me about what I saw his behavior. Like, she, what do you call that? Like, um, a doubt. doubt. A doubt. Um, and I was looking at him, and I thought, well, I... I don't know, he kind of looks like JJ to me, you know, hyper and angry one minute and kind of chill or crying the next minute. Like that's how his behaviors always were around me. On the 23rd of September, a final doorbell video of JJ Alive was recorded. His last confirmed sighting was at Rexburg's Kennedy Elementary School. The following day, Lori contacted JJ's school to withdraw him, saying that she would start homeschooling him instead. On the 1st of October, Lori rented a storage unit. Surveillance footage shows Lori and Alex visiting the unit a total of nine times during the month. 
the Blue Rogue arrives at 225. You can see the timestamp says 125, but that's because the clocks were off, according to the facility. Lori is driving the Rogue and makes her way to the door of the building where her unit is. She gets out two minutes later at 227 with the man we believe is Chad. At 229, he pulls a tire out of the back of the Rogue and rolls it into the storage unit. Then one minute later, he and Lori both carry in together what appears to be a removable car seat. They put it in the locker, shut the door, and leave the facility at 2.32. Their entire visit is just seven minutes. So why does this matter? Well, that same day, Brandon Boudreaux says that he was shot at in Gilbert, Arizona around 9.30 that morning while coming home from the gym. Brandon had been married to Melanie, Lori's niece, and he had a very large life insurance policy and assets totaling over $1 million. Months earlier, Melanie began spending a lot of time with Lori and her religious group. Then Melanie suddenly demanded a divorce from Brandon. The bullet missed his head by inches, and police say the person who shot at him was driving a Jeep registered to Charles Vallow. That same day, Lori purchased a ring on Amazon the same one she is wearing in her wedding photos with Chad. A week later, Tammy Daybell called the police on a shooter outside her house. Court documents later indicate Alex attempted to shoot and kill Tammy that day. Ten days later, Tammy died in her sleep. Chad claimed that she had retired the night before with a terrible cough and died in her sleep. In a very recent release of the autopsy results, it has been found that Tammy died of asphyxiation at the hands of another. On the 5th of November, 2019, just a mere two weeks after Tammy's death, recent widowers Chad and Lori Daybell got married on a beach in Hawaii. At that point, Tylee and JJ's grandparents were raising alarms regarding the children's sudden disappearances. At the same time, Lori and Chad were telling people in Hawaii where they were residing that Tylee had died in 2017, or even that Lori had no children to start with. These combined factors drew the police's attention. On the 26th of November, police raided Lori's storage unit. Inside it, they discovered the missing children's belongings. There were some winter clothing uh, in a couple of boxes a couple of children's bikes and in the winter clothing, there was a couple personalized blankets uh, that had the, the pictures, look like family pictures that were sewn onto the blankets. Okay. The next day, they served a search warrant for Lori and Chad's Rexburg residences. When the authorities arrived, however, they found them deserted. On the 6th of December, Melanie contacted Rexburg police. Supposedly, JJ had been residing with her. She came clean, saying that she had been told to lie about the child's whereabouts. In their effort to locate JJ, police discovered that Tylee had also been missing. Five days later, as police were beginning to gather evidence in the Daybell case, Tammy Daybell was exhumed, and an autopsy was performed on her body. The results, however, remain unknown to the public. On December 20th, police announced J.J. and Tylee's disappearances as possibly linked to Tammy Daybell's death. Chad and Lori are named as persons of interest. But they stay quiet. In spite of a $20,000 cash reward offered by the children's grandparents for their whereabouts and Daybell's family pleading for him to cooperate with law enforcement, both he and Lori refused to utter a single word. Chad, where are Lori's kids? What happened to Tammy, Chad? Can you tell us what happened to Tammy? Why have you guys been in Hawaii for so long? Listen, just tell people what's happening. There's people around the country praying for your children, praying for you guys. Why don't you give us answers? That's great. That's great. That's great that they're praying for you, praying for your kids, what? You have nothing to say? Did you do something to your children? Are your children still alive? That's a simple question. I've got three kids of my own. I can tell you every minute where my kids are at. Where are your children? 
What do you guys plan to do now? Are you gonna, you have five days to get your children in front of a judge in Rexburg, then what? Are you guys innocent of any crimes? Have you committed any crimes? Chad, you guys have a lot to say on your podcast. You don't have anything to say now? Lori? After Lori failed to present J.J. and Tylee to Rexburg's health department, a $5 million warrant for her arrest was produced. She was seized and brought back to Idaho from Hawaii. On the 20th of February, 2020, she was charged with two felony counts of desertion and non-support of dependent children. On her first hearing on the 6th of March, her bail was lowered and set to $1 million. In May 2020, an exclusive interview with Melanie Gibb was released, discussing her time with Lori and Chad Daybell. Supposedly, Lori had said of J.J. that he was in the way of her and Chad's mission. Also, in May 2020, on the 8th, Alex Cox died of natural causes. The night before his death, Cox reportedly said, I think I'm their fall guy. He would have been essential in finding out what happened to Tylee and J.J. On the 9th of June, 2020, police searched Daybell's Rexburg property. Within hours, they found human remains. They removed the rocks, and it underneath the white rocks was some thin wood paneling. Okay. And uh, what did you observe them do with that paneling? They removed the paneling. Okay. And then what did you observe? Uh, initially, as soon as they re removed the paneling, I could smell the odor of a decomposing body. Once they removed some soil, there was a, a black, what I can best describe as a black plastic bag with a, a round object protruding through the dirt. Okay. Uh, what did you observe the ER team do after you saw that? They dug a little bit more around the round, round object, which appeared to me to be the crown of a head uh, protruding through the dirt. They used a small, sharp instrument to cut through the black plastic. Okay. And what did you observe when they did that? There was a white plastic underneath the black plastic, and they also used the white instrument to cut through the white plastic. Okay. And what did you observe when they did that? I observed what looked to be brown human hair. Okay. It was a, what appeared to be a small body tightly wrapped in black plastic, uh, covered in duct tape. Okay. I'm describing, or I'm pointing to a fire pit on Mr. Daybell's property, just north east, correction, northwest of the fire pit, there is what we've referred to the pet cemetery and it's just north of the pet cemetery where I helped excavate. Uh, what did you observe? I had uh, been away from that area, uh, but when I returned to that area, they had already dug down and located uh, a, what would appear to be a, a mass of burnt flesh and charred bone. The initial body that was found was JJ. A photo of JJ taken on September 22nd, 2019, shows him wearing the same red pajamas that were found on his lifeless body. And what you just heard the detective describe as a burned mass of flesh and bone was what remained of Tylee Ryan. Chad Daybell was also taken into custody on the 9th of June, 2020. His bail was also set at $1 million after next day's hearing. During Daybell's hearing, a recorded phone call between Melanie Gibb and Lori was released. In it, Gibb presented concern for J.J. and Tylee. The conversation saw Chad and Lori confronted by a member of their group for the first time. Hello, sweet Melanie. Hi, Chad. Hey, Lori. Hello. Hey, let me put on speaker. Oh, okay. All right. We're in <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 
How are you guys? We're okay. How are you doing, babe? I'm doing pretty good, thanks. I was wondering, where, where are you guys? We're just hanging out. Hanging out? <laughs> are, you, are you in Idaho? We're no. in Idaho. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to ask you a question, if you don't mind, Lori. Yeah, of course, um, honey. I want to know, um, you remember we talked about JJ going to Kay's house, and you told me they went there, and now he's not there? I was wondering what happened. Well, I had to move him somewhere else because of her actions, so... Was she, was she doing something? Like, was she trying to come get him or something? Or, like, trying to kidnap him? Well, she's, yeah, she said that lots of times before, but, um. Okay, I, well, when, you know, when I asked Chad the other day, I was like, hey, um, you know, where, where is JJ? And he said, for my security, he didn't want me to know, so is there a reason I should be in danger to know where he is? <laughs> No, it's nobody. It's his danger. It's the danger that there's people after me. Okay. We so just felt that if you knew, that puts you in a danger. Well, just in a bad position. Yeah, a bad position. Everybody, sure. if they don't know anything, then they don't have to say they know. Right, so you're just worried. Okay. Um, I'm just to keep him protected and... And keep you protected. And keep yeah. everybody else I appreciate that. Um, well, I was wondering why you told the police why he was with me. I just needed to use, have somebody that I, so I wouldn't have to tell them where he really was because they were going to tell Kay where he is. Oh, yeah. So is it, do you think it's like your family or, you know, like your family, your dad or, you know, those well, my people? my family. Well, not my whole family, but you, as you know, most of my family is working against me and yeah. with her, basically. Yeah. Is JJ safe? He is safe and happy. I did have a question that I asked Al at one point, your brother, um, if, um, if I wanted to know, you know, um, like where he was and... He said, I did not want to know and that he could not be found. So what does that mean? I don't know why he would say that, but it's the same story. Like I, yeah. I, I, I don't even want Al to know. I don't want anybody to know so that nobody has to be worried about it. You haven't shown me anything. I don't know why you're being controversial to me or if you're recording this conversation for the police or whatever. I don't know what your intention is on this phone call. Well, but yeah. I love with all my heart, and I have forever, and yeah. I will always love you. I appreciate those words, but if you really love me, you wouldn't have told the police that I had JJ with me. Flashing forward to the 7th of October, 2021, law enforcement released Charles Vallow's murder case. Lori was accused of conspiracy to murder her ex-husband, on top of her other convictions relating to Tylee and JJ. But in another turn of events, on the 11th of April 2022, Lori was deemed psychologically unfit to stand trial. A week later in court, Lori refused to speak. Her attorney asked for a not guilty plea to be entered on her behalf. Your Honor, she intends to remain silent. However, on the 26th of May, the prosecution announced that they will be pursuing the death penalty for Lori, as well as Chad, whose death penalty pursuit has been announced earlier this year. At this point, Chad is also accused of Tammy's first degree murder. Lori's trial began on the 3rd of April, 2023. There's no release date for Chad's. No one except for Lori and Chad Daybell, as well as the deceased Alan Cox, will ever truly know what happened to the unfortunate J.J. and Tylee. The children's manners of death have not been released, and when it comes to Tylee, it is unlikely that we will ever know unless either of the Daybells decide to break their unrelenting silence. What is known is that based on the state of Tylee's body, she had been cut up and burned prior to being buried. 
Strikingly, it is known that Daybell used to work as a grave digger. As for a motive for the killing of the two innocents, well, no one really knows. Friends of Laurie suspect that Tylee was viewed as a liability, that having been there on the day Charles Vallow died, she might have known too much about her mother's and uncle's involvement. Others believe that the children represented some of the dark spirits that the Daybells claimed to be seeing. Perhaps that in itself was a good enough reason for the fanatics to end their lives. What remains clear is that no matter Chad and Lori's eccentric beliefs, there is no right reason for killing two children. There is no reason both their spouses should have died. And there is no good reason for the chain of destruction that the Daybells have left in their wake. Did this video answer your questions about this convoluted case? Well, make sure you check out our videos on other high-profile murder cases, such as the one on the Murdaugh murders. Be sure to watch for our new features as they arrive. We'll see you next time on The Decoder.